everybody. It's Jessica from She and Bray Blues. I decided to try an experiment today and record uh, the latest episode of my podcast live here on Facebook. So this is a whole new thing. We'll see how it goes. Um, it's an experiment. And if you like it, please let me know so that I can uh, know that I should try it again sometime. Uh, we all love a good pattern sale, us sewists, and I love them as much as anyone else. Um, but there are some problems with that. Here's why the pattern companies don't want you to stop hoarding their sewing patterns. I've been sick for about a week and I apologize in advance for my gravelly voice today. I'm really passionate about this topic and I can't wait to share some observations with you and hopefully get some interaction from people. That's why I decided to try it uh, as a Facebook Live um, because I'd really like some interaction on this topic. I'd like to know what you think. Um, so the question I want you to answer is how many of the big four pattern company sewing patterns do you own? Do you have a binder full of them? Maybe a box full? Maybe a room full? Maybe you don't even know how many you have. That is very possible. Uh, perhaps you've taken part in the, the pattern de-stashing hashtags that have been going on on Instagram or on Facebook in uh, pattern de-stashing groups and fabric de-stashing groups. I've seen, you know, people trying to get rid of some of their stash. And uh, I've, so I've been going through my sewing room this month, kind of organizing things. And I've come to some conclusions about buying sewing patterns. I personally own about 50 patterns. Um, which is not a huge amount, but it's more than I had a year ago uh, when I started my blog and my um, podcast. I had very few, maybe two or three, hardly any. Um, so most of these are recent purchases. And I've used a lot of them, but there are just as many that I have not used and probably never will. Uh, I've noticed a big trend in um, sewing groups on Facebook for pattern sale announcements. Uh, one person posts that the fabric store is having a 99 cent sale and everybody else runs out and purchases a cartload of patterns and they come home and they um, post all pictures of their pattern haul on Facebook and everybody says, ooh, I like this one or I like that one or I need this or that. Um, and next week it's the craft store that's doing the same thing. They're having a sale and everyone runs out and buys patterns at the craft store and we post more pictures of our pattern haul online. Uh, recently, I came across a post on Facebook Marketplace uh, from a lady who was locally selling a collection of 425 sewing patterns spanning decades of about 30 years. Uh, it was a fairly good deal. It was about $75 for all 425 patterns. And for a brief moment, I thought about purchasing it. I really did. I was kind of tempted. But that's a lot of patterns. However, who in the world has room to store 425 patterns? Very few of us. How could you possibly keep them all organized, even if you tried? And they're just paper. I mean, wouldn't they get full of bugs and mildew and other things? I have purchased too many sewing patterns already, and I don't have anywhere near that many. But this madness kind of has to stop. It really does. We can't keep going on like this. I'm not going to buy any more patterns unless I absolutely have to have them. And we'll talk a little bit about the, that as we uh, go on in the podcast here. Um, I've been thinking through why the pattern companies would mark their products down so drastically that we all run out and buy boatloads of them that we may never even sew. In this day and age when fewer women and people are sewing than ever before, why would they do this? Does that even make sense? It doesn't. It seems as if we are slaves to the pattern companies in a really unhealthy way. And I'd like to know why. So I wrote down uh, seven reasons why the big four pattern companies don't want you to stop hoarding sewing patterns. So here we go. Okay, and by the way, while I'm uh, working here, I've got a little quiz going. If you want to fill it out, I'd love to know how many sewing patterns you have in your stash. I'm taking a poll. And uh, if we get some interesting answers, uh, we'll have some more interesting topics to talk about. So number one reason, 
The pattern companies are creating a buying frenzy by the excitement of seasonal pattern launches. So as you know, new patterns are released several times each year for each season. And by creating these super sales where they mark everything down, manufacturers have us running into the store to buy their new designs each time they come out. It is a frenzy. It is good for business and they love it. Why wouldn't they? Uh, and number two, they are still making money even if the patterns are only 99 cents. <coughs> Excuse me. As we know, patterns are just paper. And by mass producing and printing, more and more the cost of each printing goes down and down. By selling them as cheaply as possible, they are selling more than ever. <coughs> Excuse me, obviously the pattern companies are still making some kind of profit at it or they wouldn't be doing it. So McCall's, Butterick, Simplicity, and Vogue are the big four if you didn't know. The big four pattern companies are actually two companies right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, they consolidated not long ago because the business isn't as good as it used to be. <coughs> I think a lot of this is due to the way the entire industry is shifting as we begin to purchase more PDF patterns from independent designers and less of the commercial patterns. For the first time, these companies are up against real competition that they haven't ever had before. Bloggers with YouTube channels like myself, indie pattern designers like myself, have left the pattern companies scrambling to change with the times. And they're big companies, and change is slow when you're a big company. So maybe they'll get um, to the point where they have more PDF downloads and um, you know video tutorials and that sort of thing. And they're working towards it, but will they change in time? Who knows? We'll find out. So number four, they don't want you to know that you are buying the same patterns over and over again. So having worked in the apparel industry, I can tell you this secret. The patterns that you're buying are actually the same pattern. So how does this work? Uh, when I worked as an assistant designer for a lingerie company in Chicago, it was my job to make the first patterns. So the designer would make a sketch of a design of a garment, and it was my job to make the first pattern for it so that would then be cut out of sample fabric and stitched together for the first fitting. And then adjustments would be made, and we would repeat the process a couple times till it was um, the right fit. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you're in design school, they teach you to start with a sloper pattern is what it's called. It's a very basic design, uh, close fitting to the body with darts in it. It's a basic style. You can then alter it and create additional styles from it. That's where the patterns kind of come from. But large companies don't have to do that. They have tons of patterns already from their years and years of business sitting in their stock room. So all I had to do was go in the stock room find the style that was most similar to the design, the new design that the pattern had come up with, I'm sorry, the designer had come up with, I'd get the pattern out and make a copy of it. And then I would change it. I would change the neckline. I would change the sleeve. It might be longer. It might be shorter. It might have, um, you know, elastic instead of a cuff, uh, whatever. We would change this pattern and then give it a new name and say, it's new pattern, ABC. Very simple process, but it is essentially the same pattern with a few changes. So when you're going out and you're buying all these dozens and dozens of patterns, you have the same thing sitting in your pattern stash at home. You just don't even know it's there. Okay, number five reason, pattern companies want you to rely on them obviously. They want you to think that you need more patterns. This is not true. If you have a small amount of basic styles to work with in your pattern stash, you can sew just about anything. You should look for a basic pattern sloper that you can make to your size and fit. 
then you can change it to whatever style you're looking for. Way back when, uh, when home sewing was really a big thing, women knew how to do this. They were not pattern hoarders. They didn't need to be. They learned dressmaking from their mothers, grandmothers, whatever, and they knew how to make changes um, to the styles to suit their needs without having to run out and buy all kinds of commercial patterns. Now, I'm not saying that if you've never sewn in your life, you won't need to buy a sewing pattern. That is not true. I am just saying that if you already own 425 patterns and have them in your stash, you should take some time and learn how to alter a pattern that you already have that fits your needs to free yourself from the pattern hoarding mentality. So some great fitting patterns to use are McCall 7279. It's a basic dress pattern with darts. McCall 7352, a basic princess seam dress. McCall 6361, a basic pant and skirt. McCall 2718, a basic dress to be used with gingham or plaids, matching plaids. Or McCall's 5894 is just a basic jean pattern that you can use to make other styles of jeans. So these are just patterns that I happen to own. These all happen to be McCall's because I kind of like the way they fit me. Um, each pattern company has a similar basic fitting pattern. You just have to find it. McCall's has one, but a one. They all do. Choose the company that you like to work with or that fits your body measurements the best and stick with it. Um, and I'm going to have some upcoming workshops to help you in this process. If you're interested, you can send me an email at jessicachambrayblues.com with the words fitting workshop in the subject line, and I'll keep you posted on my upcoming events. Um, so number six, runway looks yield big business with designer patterns. I love watching Vogue, pag, Vogue patterns and their new pattern releases. Um, they take the looks from the runway, designer created gowns, whatnot, and they make similar knockoff styles that we run out and buy patterns for. Last year, um, there was a lot with Meghan Markle and the Royal Wedding, all kinds of patterns with um, beautiful dresses that were worn to the wedding, Meghan's dresses, all kinds of things. And there, there it's a, creates a kind of a frenzy again on what what's happening right now, and you know we should be part of it. You should run out and buy some patterns to make your own version. Um, <clears throat> so the thing is, you can make your own patterns without having to buy new ones all the time. Maybe you knew this, maybe you didn't. And depending on where you are with your sewing skills, you can create these looks easier than you might think. If you take the time to learn some basic fitting and pattern techniques, it will change your life. If you read some books, watch some YouTube videos, experiment here and there, and practice. I can help you with the journey. That's what I'm here for. And it's not to say that you can't go out and buy your favorite designer inspired pattern once in a while because I do this too. Uh, I happen to be partial to Vogue patterns that are designed by Badgley Mishka, Badgley Wawa as I love to call him. Uh, I have a number of these patterns and there's something about them, I don't know what it is, but he has a way of putting together things that I would have never thought about or using fabrics in a different way. And I just love the look and construction of them. Um, and every time there's a new pattern release of Badgy Waba, I just want to run to the fabric store and buy a pattern. But I know that since I don't hoard other patterns, that sometimes this is okay. I can indulge myself in this way and not feel guilty about it and not have, you know, not have to worry that I am being a pattern hoarder. So we're up to seven. So the biggest reason that pattern companies want you to think that you need to buy more patterns is that you need them to become a better sewer. And this is a big misconception. They start you out with easy to sew basic patterns. Then they add the average construction and finally, you know, up to the advanced or expert categories. 
the expectation is that you're going to buy from each category as you come become a more experienced seamstress. Well, not many of us follow all the rules all the time. Uh, once we have a taste for basic sewing and you can see what you can accomplish, there's no stopping some of us. Expertise comes from practice and patience and not from having dozens of patterns in your stash. It just doesn't. You can do more than you think with less mental clutter. All those patterns are going to weigh you down. They're going to clog up your sewing room. They're going to stifle your creative process. And you are going to have problems getting past it. So how many of us have bought a pattern that we absolute love, bring it home and open it up and read the instruction directions that are super complicated and then become completely deflated before we have even started sewing? We're completely defeated mentally that it is above our sewing skills, above our comprehension, and we don't even try. We put those directions right back in the envelope, throw that pattern in our stash, and wait for the next pattern sale. And I can't tell you how many times I've actually done this myself, believe it or not. And I can tell you that I have many times seen mistakes on patterns, pattern envelopes, and unnecessary steps in constructions and ways that it could have been simplified, could have been made easier to sew. It happens all the time. So for us to become discouraged before we even try and put that pattern back in the envelope is doing us a disservice. You deserve better than that. You can do this. When I was a student at the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York, on my first day of sewing class, uh, we were going to make a basic blouse. And the pattern was just simple commercial pattern with um, a button front, long sleeves. It had a two-piece collar and button cuffs. And I had a lot of sewing experience before I was actually a student, but I'd never sewn a tailored shirt before. And I was a little bit intimidated by class on my first day. And the first thing that our professor asked us to do was to take out the pattern directions, write our names on them, and hand them in. And after we did that, I kind of sat there waited to see you know, if he was going to hand them back out or if he just wanted to make sure that we had them. I was really confused. And after he collected all of the papers, he made an announcement. He said, okay, now we can learn to sew. And I was just devastated. I remember it felt like my security blanket was just ripped away from me. How in the world was I supposed to learn to sew without the directions? And you know what? He was absolutely right. And that experience was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I learned to sew and I've never forgotten. And I'm never confused or swayed by pattern directions or techniques because I know how to put things together without them. It is liberating, let me tell you. And in apparel manufacturing, if you think about it, they don't have sewing directions in sweatshops where they're sewing hundreds of garments at a time. No one tells them how to put the whole thing together. They sew without them because they understand construction. And that's what your goal should be. You should work towards understanding construction so that you don't need to rely on commercial patterns and directions. And I would love your feedback on this episode. This is going to ruffle some feathers, I think, in the sewing community. Um, let me know how you're doing with your pattern hoarding. If you are... Uh, still going to be out there buying patterns, or maybe you're going to think twice next time. Uh, if you're interested in uh, joining my fitting workshop, like I said, send me an email to jessica at chambrayblues.com with the words fitting workshop in the subject line. I'll make sure that you get notification for the events in the future. And uh, as always, if you would leave me a review on iTunes, that would be great. It helps me to get more guest interviews and sponsors for my show and to keep doing what I'm doing because I am absolutely passionate with um, helping other people meet their dream of sewing. Oh, and if you're on Facebook, thanks for joining us. And if you need uh, more information or if you have a comment, please uh, let me know how you're doing with your stash how many patterns you have, and uh, if this has changed your opinion. 
on my commercial patterns. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Yeah. <clears throat>